Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website, www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Sorry for the squeak. You didn't spray it yesterday like you said he was going <laughs> to. Oopsie. Oopsie. Okay. So, a couple things. Um, anybody see the article about uh, bed bug beagles? There are two beagles, I think in New York City, that are retiring from their job as bed bug sniffers. Um, and my office manager, Pam, is a beagle person. She does a lot of work with SOS Beagle Rescue, does a lot of beagle transport. And I sent her the article. And I said, wow, this is really interesting. And she said, oh, yeah, it's the real deal. She had bed bug sniffing beagles work in her home years ago when her kids brought home bed bugs from sleeping over at someone's house and they did the thermal heat treatment where you basically kind of wrap your house in saran wrap and then uh, heat it to this ridiculous temperature that kills the bugs. And every six months, the beagles come back and recheck her house, which is really cool. So, um, but apparently these two in New York got to retire. Uh, why would a five month old smell like maple syrup. Okay, well, unless the pets uh, get in ketosis, sometimes you'll get that smell with ketosis. I don't know. And, but it's weird to get type one diabetes in, in dogs. We do get it occasionally. Somebody I saw before asked, um, <laughs> I have an eight week old two pound chihuahua. How long should I wait to get a microchip? You can microchip them whenever you want to. It just hurts because it's a big needle. Um, uh, somebody asked how much pup loaf to feed. It's 2% of body weight for medium to large dogs, 3% of body weight for small dogs. Uh, little tiny, tiny dogs, you could even be at 4% of body weight, and that's talking for adult dogs. The, the directions for the minerals are on the side of the container, and it's based on the weight of the dog, and it, because that's loosely related to how much they're going to eat per day. So if you're using the canine minerals, it has a dose right on the side of the bottle. Okay, um, yes, good morning again. So I wanna talk about uh, lab work real quickly because I see this so commonly and it really bugs me. I'm gonna hide whose this is. It's a consult today. But I would recommend that you request a copy of your lab work. Anytime it's done, ask them to email, snail mail, fax, a copy of the lab work, <clears throat> keep that in your pet's file uh, so that if you have to go to a specialist, you have to go to an emergency service, you have the most up-to-date uh, version and they can see what's normal or abnormal for your pet. And you might want to make little notes on the lab work when you get it. This was routine lab work. Uh, this was taken when my dog or cat was suffering with vomiting and diarrhea. This was taken after we had been on vacation, after being at the kennel, whatever. Um, so that you know whether it was healthy lab work or uh, taken when they were sick. Um, but the other reason I want you to do that is because when you get lab work, It'll say what the normals are, and then it will say whether it's 
high or low. And if something is really out of whack and you've already talked to the technician or doctor at the practice and they've given you the results of the lab work and they tell you, oh, everything is normal, it all looks good, you can look at it and go, well, wait a minute, that doesn't look normal to me. Now, if it's off by a tenth of a point, you know, if it's, if it's less than a 1% deviation and they called it normal, we're probably going to call that normal. Um, but if you've got something that is really out of whack, you might want to call back and say, hey, when I talked to the doctor, the staff, whoever, they told me everything looked good. I'm seeing this number that is really out of whack. So I've got it highlighted here so it's easy to see. But this was reported as normal to the owner. And particularly this number over here, the platelet count, which normal is, I think on this one, like 170,000 to 400,000. This animal's platelet count is 64,000. That's not normal. That is way low. That is potentially a very big problem. I would be concerned. Is this autoimmune disease? Is this an animal whose body is attacking its platelets and killing them off? Is this an animal whose bone marrow isn't making platelets? What the heck is going on? Is there a bleeding disorder somewhere that's causing them to use up the platelets? I don't think so because the red cell count's okay. But there's something going on. And so if I were the owner and I got this lab result, I'd say, you know what, let's do another blood draw. Let's do a comparison. Let's see if that's real or if it was an artifact. Now, the doctor may have seen that, the doctor may have overlooked that number, or the doctor may have seen that number, and there's a little note from the lab that says, a few small platelet clumps observed, which may falsely lower the platelet count and estimate. Well, they're saying the estimate is decreased. I want to know, is that real? Or is that an artifact? And when they're saying a few small platelet clumps, and I have previous lab work for this animal where the platelet count was, so a month earlier, the platelet count was 261,000. Now, if it went from 261,000 down to 64,000 in a month, that's a problem. That's a big problem. I want to know, is that real or is that an artifact? So if you get a copy of the lab work, that gives you the chance to look at it and a lot of times I'll have clients who say, well, send me a copy of the lab work so I have it in my hand when someone from your office calls to talk about it so that I make sure that we cover all the points and I can get all my questions answered. It's not a bad thing. Now, I'm about to make my staff crazy because now I'm going to have a bunch of people who say, can I have a copy of my lab work? And they're going to be like, oh, my God, because <laughs> it is more work. However, you're entitled to it. You paid for it. Um, and I think it's a good idea to have all of that in a binder for your pet um, and to know what's going on. So uh, this particular animal, the month before the lab work, the liver enzymes were high. This month, liver enzymes look pretty good. So they did put the dog on a supplement for that, which probably is what brought it down. But were those liver enzymes high because there was an inflammatory process brewing? And is that inflammatory process that was brewing now an autoimmune platelet disorder. I don't know. We need new labs. We got to figure that out. So um, should vets versus vet techs speak directly to the client when results are abnormal? In our office, uh, it generally is our technicians, but my technicians have anywhere from 10 to 17 years of experience. Uh, they are graduate technicians. Um, and if they, so they look at, we, we interpret the lab work we write it up in the chart. The technician looks at what we have written. If they have any questions about what was written, they come to us before they call. Um, if the owner has more questions than what the technician can answer, then it gets handed back to a doctor. Uh, so it, it really just depends. Um, I don't want my receptionist giving lab results. They're not trained, they're not graduates. They didn't study clinical pathology. The technicians do. So uh, it really depends on who that person is. It's, it's no different than, for instance, uh, when Hugh and my mom go to the doctor, if they have lab work, the nurse is always the one that calls with the lab results or sometimes never calls. And three months later, we're still hounding them going, hey, we never got any lab results. Can you tell us what's going on? Oh, 
we have a high blood sugar? Huh, would have been nice to know that three months ago. Probably should have called us, which is really weird because the, the human medical profession is held to a totally different standard than the veterinary profession. We're expected to get your results to you within 48 hours. Doctors, meh, three weeks, three months, yeah, whatever, when they get around to it. It's very frustrating. Anyway, uh, okay, Sweta says, rechecking Molly's blood work today, especially for her pancreatitis since she's been having acid reflux. Yeah, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. So, okay, I got to go prep for a long day's work. Uh, everybody have a wonderful day. It's rainy here on the East Coast.